So you're thinking of becoming a freelancer this year. This is the ultimate beginner guide that you can follow step by step that will teach you everything that you need to know about freelancing. Now, this is going to be a full beginner tutorial or course. So it's going to be a bit long, but if you are really serious about making money online through freelancing, you're not going to worry about the length. Now, personally, I've been making money online through freelancing and various other ways for about seven years now. In fact, I've got a whole YouTube channel where I actually show all the different ways that I've been earning income online. But the best way that I've been earning income consistently is through freelancing. Freelancing totally changed my life. It's the first opportunity that I got to earn income that helped me to move from being someone who was broke. I moved to the city of my dreams. I live in Cape Town, South Africa. I was able to buy my very first car and actually get to a point whereby I now don't have to worry about money, not worrying about how you're going to pay rent, how you're going to buy food and take care of your family. I'm now able to travel and do anything that I want. And the main thing that has helped me to do this is freelancing. So if you want real legit proof of whether I know what I'm talking about or not, you can just go through my channel. There are tons of videos that show you real proof and real results that I've got. But here, I just want to jump straight into helping you to become a freelancer in this new year. So if you stick around and watch this video, hear the things that you're going to learn. First and foremost, I'm going to walk you through what exactly freelancing is so that we can get an understanding of freelancing. Then I'm going to help you find the right niche, helping you find a profitable niche so that when you start freelancing, you're actually going to be making real money from it. Then I'm going to show you a way you can actually learn the skills so that you can become a qualified freelancer. Then we're going to talk about how you can register your business and the issue of paying taxes. And then we're going to talk about you actually getting a portfolio or building your own portfolio, especially if you're a new beginner and you don't have any work that you've done before. This is something that's going to definitely help you to get a portfolio that will get you clients. Then we're going to talk about setting your rates or how much exactly you are meant to be charging your clients. And then we're going to look at finding your clients. I'm going to give you different methods that I personally use that have helped me to be able to find clients easily. And then I'm going to give you a few tips and tricks that are going to help you to actually manage your freelance business. You want to approach this as a business, not just something that you're just doing by the side, but something that you can actually grow and help you achieve financial freedom. And then we're going to talk about invoicing and receiving payments from clients. And then lastly, we're going to talk about how you can actually grow your freelance career. Now, as I mentioned earlier on, this is is a free course that will help you to get started with freelancing. So anything, any question that you probably have about freelancing, I'm going to try and cover all the beginner questions that you guys normally ask me in the comment sections of my different videos. But to help you even further, what I'm going to do is that I'm going to put chapters on every topic that I'm going to cover in this video. So that if maybe there's something specific that you want to learn, you can check in the description below. You'll be able to see the chapters of the different topics that I'll cover in this video. But also because this video is free, you can learn from it. But then if you want some more advanced trainings, I can help you in three different ways. Firstly, I've got an ebook which is called The Freelance Blueprint, which is a step-by-step -step guide, which gives you all the links. It gives you all the websites, everything that you need to know and get started as a freelance. This is like the playbook that I personally use to help me to grow as a freelancer, going from zero dollars to earning over 10k per month through freelancing in US dollars. Now, this ebook is going to be available in the description of this video. You can get it just for $15 only, or also depending on when you are watching this video, you can actually get it at a discounted price. The second way that I can also help you is that I'm going to be launching a course in the near future. Depending on when you watch this video, the course might be available or it's still something that's coming up, but you can just also register there just to be notified when the course is going to be available. In this course, you'll be able to get step-by-step -step video tutorials as I show you how to do the whole freelancing process. And then lastly, this is something that's already readily available. There'll be an option for you to book a call with me and I'll help you on your freelance journey. But obviously this is not going to be for free, but if you feel that you need help with actually getting started as a freelancer, or growing your own personal business, just click the link to book a call with me. All the details will be there and then you can choose whether it's something that you want to do or not. So what exactly is freelancing? Freelancing is essentially being self-employed and offering skills and services to clients on a project basis. So unlike a traditional job, freelancing allows you to choose from different clients that you can work with. You can set your own rates. And the best part is that you can work from anywhere and you can work at whatever time that you want to work. Now, the most common freelance jobs that everyone knows about are graphic design, video editing, website design, and copywriting. But there are so many other different types of jobs that you can do as a freelancer that are available to you. And just keep watching this video. I'm going to show you where you can find ideas of different types of freelance jobs that you can do. The next essential step that you need in your freelance journey is to identify a niche or a service that you 
going to be offering. The reason why someone is going to be willing to pay you money is because you're going to be offering them a service that they either don't have the time to do themselves or they don't have the skill to do for themselves. So I'm going to show you different ways that you can actually approach this by just a few guidelines that you might want to use when choosing your niche. You want to choose something that you know that you are passionate about because here you are in it for the long run. You're not just doing this thing just to make a quick buck. But freelancing is something that you can do for years and years and years. And so you'd rather do something that you enjoy doing than something that you're just forced to do to just make a bit of money. Another way to go about it is to look at the current skills that you have. For example, in my first job, I was doing sales for a computer company. And one of the skills that that job taught me was graphic design, how to talk to people, and a bit of website design. So eventually when I decided to become a freelancer, those were the three skills that I focused on that I already had because I had a bit of experience in the past working with them. So what you want to do is that you want to do a bit of research to see the different paths that you might want to take. And then you make a decision and then you just focus on it consistently and then eventually you're going to see the results. Now, one major factor that you need to know and understand is that the reason why people are going to be paying you is that you are they're going to be paying you to solve problems that they have. And the bigger the problems that you are able to solve for them, the more money that they're going to be paying you. For example, you can take time to learn graphic design as a skill, and maybe you can want to focus on something like logo design. But you notice that most people that need logos are normally people who are starting up companies. And so most startups don't normally have a lot of money in their budgets. So you're making a decision to say that I want to become a millionaire through freelancing, but I'm going to be focusing on logo design for startups, it might not be a good idea. Whereas compared to you looking for bigger problems that you can solve, for example, a lot of companies don't know how to find clients and you can learn a skill like, for example, maybe let's say Facebook advertising. And don't worry, I'm gonna show you where you can find all these different skills so that you can make a decision on what skill set you want to develop. But once you've got that skill set of doing maybe Facebook advertising, you can charge more money because you're going to be helping companies to get clients. And what that means is that you're going to be helping them to make money. Anyone will pay you more money as long as you help them to make more money than they are, than they are actually paying you. So solving problems is how you actually get paid. Now, some of the most common problems, just to mention a few, are that most companies are struggling with making more money. The next one, most companies are struggling with growing, for example, their social media. Most companies are struggling with not having time in the day. There's just so many things to do so they don't have time to really run their business. Most individuals struggle with tech, which is an advantage for us younger generation because we grow up in tech, so it's easy to reach out to this older generation and offer to help them with things that have to do with tech in running their business. Not knowing how to write good copy or how to present or how to use the right words online, for example, on their website, on their social media, not knowing how to grow an email list, not knowing how to present their brand visually. And here I'm talking about graphic design. And so there are two ways that I recommend that you actually find ideas of what service should I offer. The first one is to find a freelance platform, for example, Fiverr.com. Another one that I talk about a lot is Upwork. But for this video, I'm just going to show you Fiverr. If you just go to Fiverr.com, you will be able to see all the different services that people are already offering. For example, if I just come here, you see there's programming and tech, there's graphic design, there's digital marketing, writing translation, video animation, um, AI services, music and audio, business consulting. And if I scroll down again, it's going to show you all these different services and these are the most popular ones. But if I just scroll down to the bottom and I click here where it says sitemap, it's going to give me a full list of every single service that you can find on this website. So you can just simply just go through all this and see different things that you might be interested in offering. It's quite a long and extensive list, but remember the guidelines that I gave you earlier on. Look for something that maybe you're passionate about. Look for something that maybe you've got some experience in. Look for something that you are interested in and just simply choose one of these and choose to learn it. So after going through this whole list here, you cannot say that I don't know what service to offer. All these are different services that people are offering and they're all earning money on this freelance platform by just offering to people who don't have the time, who don't have the energy, they don't have the know-how to actually do it for themselves. The second way that you can get freelance ideas is by using ChatGPT. ChatGPT is a tool that anyone can access for free. You just simply search for ChatGPT, you create an account, and then what you'll be able to do is that you'll be able to come and ask ChatGPT questions. And basically ChatGPT is AI, meaning that it's artificial intelligence. It uses all the information that it finds on the internet to give you specific answers. But the nice part about ChatGPT is that it just accelerates the learning process in that it's got access to all the information that is there on the internet. So if you ask it something now, it's going to give you an answer now. You don't have to spend countless hours trying to find the answers. 
For example, I just wrote here and said, I want to offer freelance services to businesses. What are the biggest problems that most business owners struggle with that they are willing to pay a lot of money for that I can provide as a freelancer? So if I just click on enter there, it's going to start listing out all the different problems that people are struggling with. And then it's going to show me opportunities or different skill sets that I can learn that I can offer as a freelancer. So as you can see here, it's typing out. And the first one that it mentions there is digital marketing and SEO. And as you can see, there it says many businesses struggle with online visibility and reaching their target audience. Service offering comprehensive digital marketing services, including SEO, content marketing, social media management, and paid advertising can significantly enhance their online presence and their attractiveness and attract more customers. So it listed a whole uh, lot of different ones. If you're going to be doing social media marketing or social media management, I suggest you pick one in that category and focus on it. Then as time goes on, you can develop and do more. What I mean by one is, for example, just focus on SEO alone or focus on content marketing or content creation, right? Because you want to learn skills. You want to develop your skill set one by one and then get clients, make some money, then when you are growing your business, it then turns into what we call an agency. An agency is now when you are able to offer more different services and you are not the one who's going to be doing the work. You actually can build a team where other people will actually be coming in and actually doing the work on your behalf. But as, as a freelancer, when you're starting out, just focus on one thing. So you can see here, there's a whole list of so many different things that is mentioning here. IT, cybersecurity solutions, financial management, business consulting. There's a whole lot of services that I can offer. Remember the guidelines, choose something you're interested in, something that you know that, um, okay, you are passionate about this thing and you're willing to do it for the long term. Now, for some of the things that might be listed out here, you might have got no idea, but it just sounds interesting to you. What I recommend that you do is that maybe you just take an, a title, for example, just say maybe SEO, and then just go to Google and type and say how to start an SEO agency. Or even better, just say what does SEO agency do? So that it, Google will give you descriptions of what exactly that agency does. Or even you can just ask ChatGPT and say what does an SEO agency do or an SEO freelancer do? And then it's going to just give you a brief description of what exactly you'll be doing inside of that job. As you can see here, it's typing and then I'm just going to go through whatever answer it gives me so that I can get more clarity on is this something that I want to do or not. Well, now, once I've decided on what niche I want to offer or what service I want to offer, the next question is, where do I learn the skill or how do I learn the skill? For some of you watching this, maybe you have already developed the skill. You might want to jump onto the next chapter or the next topic that I'll be covering in this video. You can see the topics by looking at the chapters in the description of this video. But if you're someone who wants to learn a new skill and you don't know where to learn the skill, this is what you need to do. I've already shared a lot about this topic in another video on YouTube and I'm going to link to it up here. But to save you time from going to watch that video, you still can watch it if you want. I'm just going to extract that video, put it in here and then you can learn some of the important points. The first website is called Free Code Camp. And I'm going to put the link in the description to the website. And so basically it's a website where you're going to be learning how to code for free. You're going to be building projects and then you're going to be earning certifications. And so for you to get started, you're just going to click on this button here where it says get started for free. And as you can see, since 2014, more than 40,000 freecodecamp.org graduates have gotten jobs at tech companies, including Apple, Google, Microsoft, Spotify, and Amazon. And I'm sure there are many other companies. So you're basically just going to come and click on the get started for free button. And then you're going to be getting access to the different courses that they have. As you can see, they've got some testimonials from different people here. But these are the courses that you can actually find. There. For example, there's responsive web design certification. There's JavaScript algorithms. There is front end development. There is relational database certification and a whole lot more. And as you can see, also they have got direct certification working with Microsoft and it's titled Microsoft certification over there. Website number two is HubSpot Academy. And this is an academy where you can go and learn different types of courses uh, from HubSpot. HubSpot is basically a platform that helps you to manage and organize your online presence. So what they have done is that they've come up with their own academy of courses that you can learn for free that will help you to be able to be effective online with the hope of you potentially using their software. As you can see here is you can sign up for the free courses, but if you want to see the most popular courses, you just scroll down here. And as you can see, they've got courses like, for example, email marketing, 
there's social media marketing certification, there's powering your business through WhatsApp. And I, I particularly find this one quite interesting. In fact, it's one of the courses I'm going to do next because more and more people are starting to use WhatsApp for business. Um, WhatsApp now allows you to actually market and advertise to people on WhatsApp. So this is one of the courses that I'm going to be doing next. I've done a few other courses here, like including the email marketing one. And then you can just keep scrolling down to just see the other courses. Another important one that I think is quite important is inbound marketing optimization. Uh, inbound simply talks about helping you to get customers to come to you. A lot of businesses struggle with getting customers. So if you're actually an expert in this, it's going to help you to um, be someone who is highly in demand. Digital marketing is another highly in demand, again, a skill that you need to know so that you can be relevant in this digital age that we're living in. There is SEO there, which is helping websites to be found or businesses to be found on um, platforms like Google so that you, the website actually ranks and people actually uh, find it. And then there's YouTube. I specialize in YouTube. I do a lot of YouTube. And if you want to get started in YouTube, here's a course that's going to teach you how to do YouTube marketing, like running some adverts and stuff like that. And for you to just get started with any one of these courses, you're just going to click, like, for example, this one on the YouTube, you're just going to click where it says start course. And then it's going to ask you to create your academy account. And as you can see, it's 100% free. I can continue with my Google account or I can actually register with a new email. The next website is what's called Google Garage, which is also sometimes called Google Skillshare. Now, this is um, a top level platform that helps you to learn most of the courses or tools that I used on the Google platform. So it, these are courses that are actually created by Google. You know, Google, the web browser that you use to Google anything. They actually create the courses to teach you how to effectively use their platform. And so there are different courses, as you can see, for example, there, there's improving your online business security, which is quite important. When hackers see that your business is actually making money, they can just get into your website and divert your money to go somewhere else, which is um, which can be very tragic. There's fundamentals of digital marketing. I spoke about digital marketing and its importance earlier on, but here you're going to be learning it from Google. You're going to understand the basics of code. So... Maybe you can use the first website that I spoke about, or you can come to this one. They teach you how to code as well. Make sure customers find you online, which is super important. A lot of people have got websites, but we can't find the website or we can't find what they're doing uh, online. It's business communication. There's get a business online. It's connect with customers over mobile. And there's just a whole lot of other courses. And also when I come here and I click on certifications, Though all these courses, they are certifications. You, But when you click on get certification, you'll come to this section here and then they're actually going to test you based on the knowledge that you have learned. Um, there's going to be like some form of like a test that you just go through and then if you qualify, you then get the certification. Website number four is what's called Audacity or Udacity, depending on how you want to pronounce it. But then you can basically learn skills to improve your potential, right? And then looking at the different types of courses that they have here, they've got courses on data science, programming and development, artificial intelligence. Now, unless you're living under a rock, the most trending topic on the internet at the moment for this past year has been artificial intelligence or AI. People are learning how to integrate artificial intelligence into their businesses. So this is one of the ways that you can actually become someone who is certified and actually knows about artificial intelligence and how to use it. You can actually approach businesses and be someone who is highly in demand as you're helping them to integrate artificial intelligence. And then there's business, there's uh, autonomous systems. Autonomous systems means maybe you're helping companies, let's say, for example, freighting companies to have less of physical workers, but they use more of uh, automation. It's, it's, it's a bad for in terms of people might lose their jobs, yes, but it puts you at a point of advantage if you're someone who is actually leading um and showing them how to actually go about it. You'll be someone who's highly in demand. Uh, product management, and then there's cloud computing. And then there's a whole lot of other courses that you just scroll down, you'll be able to see more of them. You just simply choose the course that you want to do, and then you start doing the course. And so to use the platform, you're just going to either use this button at the top or just scroll down and you see where it says start free. You're just going to click on that. Then you're just going to enter your details and start using the platform. Then the next website is what's called Mailshake. Mailshake is basically a platform that helps people to do email marketing, but they have created their own course, which is called the Cold Email Masterclass that helps people to learn how to do email marketing. Now, a lot of companies pay email marketers to do email outreach for them. 
This is when you are reaching out to companies who don't know about you and your business and you're offering them your services using what's called cold email outreach. And they basically have got this masterclass that teaches you exactly how to do that. Now, you won't find many other courses are on this website for now, but this one course can be a game changer for you, especially if you're someone who wants to uh, work in lead generation or in email marketing, as this is a highly sought after service. If you can prove that you're actually good at doing this, a lot of people will be willing to pay lots of money to do it for them. Because for example, let's just say that maybe you uh, approach a company and then you charge them 5,000 US dollars to do this for them. They'll be willing to pay it because you can help them maybe to generate 50,000 to about $100,000 more from the work that you actually do for them through this call in the market. Then the next website is Allison.com. This is a platform where you can get free online courses with certificates and diplomas. So there are so many courses here that you can also learn again, but then there are different options as compared to the previous ones. There is IT, for example, there's health, there's language, there's business, there's management, there's teaching and academics. As you can see, these are just different types of courses that you can actually do. So you just simply come here to the website and choose the type of course that you want to go ahead and get. And as you can see, there are going to be options for you to do the popular courses, you get top diplomas or with top certificates, and there are also new courses that are available. And also when you talk about doing courses, lots of people think about, okay, this is something that's going to take me maybe the next two or three months. But as you can see here, some of the courses here, they are like four to five hours, there's six to 10 hours, there's two to three hours, just depending on which course you choose to do, that's what will determine how long the course actually is. And some of the people who will be teaching you on this platform are people who work for companies like Google, uh, University of Cambridge, Stanford, uh, Microsoft, and many others. And then to sign up, you're just going to simply click on the sign up button, choose the course that you want to do, and then you start learning. So one of the other ways that you can actually learn any skill for free without you having to actually pay anything is that you can use ChatGPT that we have been talking a lot about. For example, I just came in as a wrote, I want you to give me a full beginner training or course on how to do SEO as a beginner. I intend to offer this to businesses as a service. So you can just word this differently, but I'm sure you get what I'm trying to say here. I just wanted to train me how to do SEO and I'm just going to click on enter. So as you can see here, it's done. There's a conclusion over here and there are nine modules that is presented to me about how to do SEO. So what I then can do is that I then can just scroll back all the way to the top and it says, what is SEO? I'm just going to read through this. If I, if it does not make sense to me, I can just copy this writing here and I can come back to the chat option here and say, can you please expand on this? And then it's going to expand and give me more information. So it can teach me everything I need to know as long as I know how to ask it the right questions. And then the other way that you also can learn, which is another way of learning for free, is that you can just come to YouTube and say something like SEO course for beginners. Like if I want to learn SEO, right? I'm just going to search for that on YouTube like this. And as you can see, there are other YouTubers like Marshall or other people out there who actually have created video tutorials. Like, can you see this one is one hour 57, complete SEO course for beginners, learn to rank number one in Google. So if you want to watch this video, you can watch this video or you look for other videos. So you can do this in any topic, in any niche. You can always just come and write you the name of your niche here and then just say course for beginners and it's going to show you the different courses that are there. Then the other way, which is the most effective way of actually learning any uh, topic or any niche is by actually looking for content creators like I've just shown you here. Some of these content creators have got courses that they're actually selling that if you do the course, you will learn how to get the same results that they get faster. Some of these methods that I've showed you, they are quite broad because they'll just introduce you to the topic. But the thing I like about content creators and their specific courses is they help you to get a specific outcome fast. For example, someone might have a course that teaches you how to start freelancing and make your first 10K in 30 days. I'd rather buy that course than just buy a course that is completely about maybe everything to do with maybe just freelancing or everything to do with uh, search engine optimization or whatever topic, I'd rather buy something that gives me a specific result. And so once again, just to let you know, I also have got like an ebook that you can actually get. It's for $15. It's called the Freelance Blueprint. But depending on when you are watching this video, you might be able to get a discount on it. If you want to know step by step, you want an article, one article that will show you everything that you need to do to become the freelancer that's earning 10K or more per month. 
you can just click on the link that's in the description of this video for you to just get that ebook it's just going to be for 15 dollars only option two there's going to be a course that's going to be coming out if you want more details about the course which i personally will be presenting to you just click on the second link that you're also going to see there so that you can get access to the course find out all the details about it or option number three if you want me to train you one-on-one -on -one and help you to start your own freelance business or to help you to grow your current freelance business helping you to get to 10k and above in us dollars then just check out the links that are in the description of this video book a call with me we'll talk about it and we'll see if you're a good fit the next step is for us to talk about registering your business and paying taxes now i thought it was very important for us to talk about this because this is one mistake that i made as a beginner now this is not financial advice i'm not a financial advisor i'm not a tax consultant but these are my views do not register your business before you actually have a business. What do I mean by that? A lot of people waste time trying to register their business before they know that they actually have got a working business. Meaning that you're gonna to have to learn how to register your business or you're gonna to have to remove money to pay someone to register your business for you. And the problem with that is first and foremost is you are taking a lot of time trying to get registered. Number two, once you have registered your business, you're now obligated to start paying tax. Paying tax for a business that might not work. Yes, you're hoping for the best. Yes, you're hoping that your business is gonna start making a lot of money suddenly, but you are actually allowed to run a business, start making money first, and then eventually, or at a certain point, then you register your business. Now, I live in South Africa, right? And if you go to Google and you actually search, or you just go directly to the website for company registration in South Africa, which businesses must register for tax in South Africa? This works differently for different countries, so please do a, a search in your country. But you notice here, you must register your business for value-added tax or VAT if the total valuable or taxable goods or services is more than 1 million rands in a 12 month period or is expected to exceed this amount. And then it goes on to say a business may also register voluntarily. Do you see that word there? Voluntarily if the income earned in the past 12 month period exceeds 50,000 rands. In other words, if you're earning less than a million rands within a one year period, you can choose whether you want to or not register your business for tax now like i said i am not a tax advisor this does not mean that you should never pay tax this does not mean that you are not ever going to pay tax but what this means is that you can start your business and start making money first and then after you know that okay this is a business that is actually making money then you can go to a you can then you can approach maybe a tax consultant or an accountant or someone to help you to get registered to start paying for tax so don't worry about, okay, I've just made a few dollars. Won't I get in trouble for not paying tax? No, you're not going to be in trouble because your business has not yet proved itself yet. You still have a bit of time. Make sure that your business is actually running first. It is actually profitable. And then you go and start registering for tax. Now, earlier I mentioned that I made a mistake because I went ahead and registered a business. And then I was now obliged to start paying taxes for a business that ultimately failed. And then I found myself now owing taxes for something that I no longer was doing because the business had failed. So you want to try and avoid that. Once again, I'm not a tax consultant. You need to do your own research so that you make a decision by yourself on what approach you want to use. The next thing that you're going to need to have is a portfolio. So a portfolio is, is simply something that you present to clients as evidence that you are capable or you are able to do the job that they want you to do for them and then they're going to pay you. For example, if you're a website designer, you need to have some websites that you have designed before that you can show clients that, okay, if you work with me, potentially your website can look like this. If you're a graphic designer, you want to have some posters and websites that you've designed. So what do you do if you're a complete beginner and you don't have a portfolio, you don't have any clients? Like, you know, that quite that thing that always happens when you're going to look for a job and then they say they want someone with five years experience. How do you have five years experience if you've never been given the opportunity before to work? So if you're looking for experience or you're looking to build your portfolio, this is what you need to do. Number one, you might want to start doing some jobs for free so that you can build your portfolio. For example, if you're a graphic designer, you look for different companies that don't have logos and you design logos for them for free. You go and present them and say, hey, I'm a new graphic designer. And I just wanted to do this logo for you. You guys can use it for free. I'm just doing it for my portfolio. I would appreciate it if you give me a testimonial. Then they can give you a great testimonial. Now you've got somewhat some stuff that you can go and present to another client and say, I did for them this logo. You don't have to mention that you did it for free. Only thing that they want to see is that you are able to do the logo. So number one, you might want to do some jobs for free. 
Number two, you might want to do jobs at a discounted price. Most people charge a certain amount of money and you need to do the research to figure out, okay, how much do people charge? What you want to do is that you want to find people who maybe need the same service, but you're going to charge at a lower rate. If you know people are charging $100, maybe you want to charge $50 or $30. It's just an example. Why? Because you just want to get the job and you want to build up your portfolio. And at least this way, it's nicer because at least you get a bit of money into your pocket for doing the job. Don't worry, later on, you're going to increase your prices. But for now, you're just focusing on building your portfolio. Option number three, you don't have businesses that you can work for for free. You don't have businesses that you can maybe give at a discounted price. Option number three is for you to make up businesses or to make up ghost companies and to do the work for them. Example, once again, if I'm a logo designer, I can just make up some company name. Like I can just say Malawa Enterprises. That's my surname plus the word enterprises. And I design a logo for that. I just create this nice logo and then I put it on maybe on my website or some way where I can display to people and show them that these are the types of logos that I have made. I'll just find five or six different companies with different names that I've just made up and I will design for them. Why? Because when I present these in front of a potential client, they don't care that these are not existing companies. I don't even have to mention that these are not existing companies. All they care about is that these things look good and you know what you are doing. If you're a website designer, you can do the same thing. Make up a company name or find a company that you know doesn't have a website and go ahead and create a, a, a nice simple website for them so that you can use that for your portfolio. If you have video editor, trying to look for video editing clients, what I recommend that you do is you look for some YouTubers who seem to be getting traction. For example, a YouTuber like Marshall. Maybe you see that Marshall posts good videos, but you can improve his video editing. You take his video, which is the before, you edit it, it's now an after. Then you approach Marshall and say, hey Marshall, um, I'd love to become your video editor. Here's an example of what I can do. This is the video that you posted on this day. This is what it looks like after I finish editing. So now Marshall can say yes to you or he can say no to you. It doesn't matter. You can take the same example and go to another person and say, hey, this is what I am doing for Marshall. You don't have to mention that Marshall said no. You just mention that Marshall, this is what I'm doing for Marshall. And they can see the before and the after. And you keep approaching different people, showing them using that approach. And then some are going to say yes to you and they're going to give you the work to do. Just an expert tip, make sure that you include their logos and their company details. Basically using their own content or using stuff that represents them to show them what you'll be able to do for them. People usually respond to what they can see and they can feel. In other words, if they can actually see and feel the value that you'll be providing to them, they're more likely to say yes to you because they can visually see it. As compared to you just coming and saying, hey, I can build a website for you. Who is the proof? And now when your portfolio is done and you're ready to actually reach out to clients, you are showing them your portfolio and then they want to work with you. The next big question is how much should you charge? Sometimes pricing can actually be something that's very tricky to come up with. So basically you need to do your research. And the best way to research is to see what other, firstly, freelancers are charging out there and what other companies are also charging. You notice sometimes I use the word agency instead of freelancer. They kind of do the same thing, but an agency refers to a business that is now established and they usually became agencies after starting out as freelancers. So you want to identify agencies or businesses that are out there that are already offering the service and check out what exactly are they charging. Then you go to freelance platforms like Fiverr and Upwork and see what freelancers are also charging out there. Now, depending on whether your clients are international clients or their local clients, if they are local clients, I want to see what other people in my industry are also charging so that I don't overcharge or I don't, or I don't undercharge. And then if it's international clients, depending on where I'm going to be finding clients, I want to see what people who are using the same method that I'm using to find clients are actually charging. Now, what I'd normally recommend as a beginner is that you start off undercharging as compared to other people who are doing the same thing as you. Why? Because it's easier, especially when you're starting out, to just offer to do a certain service at a lower price because some people actually look for the cheapest option. Then once you've built up your portfolio, having a few clients under your belt, you then can start increasing your prices. Don't just jump out and say that, no, maybe I did a, a course that cost me maybe $3,000, therefore I need to charge a lot of money to get my money back. You need to be very realistic and consider, okay, this service that I'm offering to people and the type of clients that I'm attracting as a beginner, 
are they going to be willing to pay? And just an expert tip to throw in there, like I mentioned earlier on, if you want to get paid more, you need to find bigger problems to solve. You need to identify big problems that people are struggling with in their businesses and solve them. And then therefore you'll be able to charge as much as you want. But like I said, I recommend that you start off by charging low prices. And then as you gradually grow and get more clients, you just keep increasing your prices. And now one thing that I've noticed that happens to a lot of freelancers is that we really get stuck on this pricing thing. You spend weeks just trying to figure out what's the right or perfect price to charge. Just set a price and reach out to clients. If the price is too low, you do a job for one person and then you increase on the next. If the price is too high, the client will let you know. They will, they will tell you, they will give you feedback and then you make decisions based on that. Don't use pricing as a reason to why you're not starting. To just simply start and then you'll be able to adjust your pricing. Whatever pricing you decide on today, it doesn't mean that you have to stick to that pricing for the rest of your life. You can always change your pricing. For the same type of website, I can approach a client and charge them $500. And then for the exact same type of website, I can approach another client and charge them $2,000. Why? Because clients are different and I'm still learning myself. I'm still learning the market. So don't be scared to charge. Just set a price and just reach out to people out there. There are so many people out there that need your help with the service that you're going to be offering. So now let's talk about how exactly you can find these people that need your help. Let's talk about how to find clients. Now, there are many different ways that you can actually approach getting clients. But they basically fall under two categories. There's what's called inbound marketing and then there's outbound marketing. Inbound marketing means that clients come looking for you. The same way that if you think of maybe companies like uh, maybe uh, Gucci or Louis Vuitton that do clothing. Normally, if you want their clothing, you need to go to the mall nearest to you and look for their particular look for the store that's nearest to you because they've done a lot of marketing that gets you to know about them and then you come searching for the store to see what's now available so that you can buy something for yourself whereas outbound marketing is normally done when people don't know about you so you are the one who's actually reaching out to clients to advertise yourself to get them to buy your products to get them to buy your services now we'll talk about both inbound and outbound marketing but i'm going to start off by, by talking about freelance platforms there is fiverr there is upwork there is freelancer there is people per hour in fact there are thousands of platforms out there where you can simply sign up as a freelancer and then you can potentially start getting clients now personally the websites that i use the most are fiverr and upwork i've mentioned them multiple times in this video but i personally use them for research purposes and also for hiring people to help me with whatever tasks that I have. I don't necessarily use them to get clients for myself. Why? Because mainly these platforms, you're not the first freelancer to go and sign up there. There are thousands of freelancers who are offering the same thing that you're going to be offering. So they are very highly competitive platforms. Also, when you're starting out as a, as a beginner, you need to really make your prices low so that like people can just give you a chance. But just know that your first few jobs are not going to make any lot of money. Then the more jobs you get, then maybe you can then start raising up your prices when people start getting to know you. I try to avoid competition, so I prefer to use inbound methods, and I'm going to show you how to actually uh, do them. So, so starting off with outbound, I'm just going to give you a couple of examples. In the same way that I mentioned earlier on, that you can learn these different freelance uh, skills that you can offer out, you also can learn these different methods. You can find courses, you can find videos that will teach you how to implement this for yourself. The first one is email marketing, where you gather people's email addresses and then you reach out to them offering your service. For example, let's say that I want to do maybe video editing or I want to do graphic design, thumbnail design for YouTubers. I can just simply go to YouTube and I can look for YouTubers who are creating content, maybe about a specific topic or in a specific niche that I want to work with. But just to just show you a random example, there's this one, as you can see here, the name of the channel is SEM Rush. I'm just going to click on that. Then I'm going to come to the YouTube page here. And now you're going to see this arrow here, which is to the right. If I click on that arrow, it's going to show me this about option where I can find out more details about this business. But now if I scroll down, there are a couple of options there. The first one is their website. I can go to their website and then I can then look for their contact details there. Like for example, in, in particular, I'm looking for their email address. 
they might have a contact us page and then I can just send an email on the contact us page or I can just keep scrolling until I find where their email address is. For this one, I can't see any email address here. So I'll just look for another example. If I come back to YouTube and I just look for another random example like this guy here, if I just click on his YouTube name there so that I can go to his channel, it brings me here. Then if I click on that arrow there, you'll notice that there's this option that says view email address. If I click on that, I can then come here. It says I'm not a robot. I'm going to click on that and then I'm going to click on submit. I'm going to click on this arrow again here and then you see where it says view email address. If I click on that, I'll be able to view his email address. You can see here it's asking me I'm not a robot. I'm just going to tick on that, click submit and then I'll be able to see his email address. I'm able to copy that email and then I'll send him an email using email marketing. Now, just in case you want to do email marketing or you want to specialize in email marketing, I want to put a link to this website here, which is called HubSpot. You can sign up and get 25 free sales email templates. These are templates that you can use for that will help you to write emails that people actually open up. And just to show you what this actually looks like, as you can see, 25 proven sales email templates. They are just different templates that you'll just be coming in here and then you'll just be editing them and using them as your emails. Can you see there's an option here to the left for the menu? I can click on that to take me to the first email, land a meeting with anyone, email that works nine out of 10 times. And then here is the template here, hi name. I'm writing in hopes of finding the appropriate person who handles whatever department, I media. I also wrote to person X and person Z in that pursuit. If it makes sense to talk, let me know how your calendar looks. So these are just templates that you can just copy and put in your email provider. And then you'll be sending out emails to the different people that you're going to be uh, wanting to reach out to to offer your service. Now, I'll probably talk more in depth about email marketing in another video, or if you really want me to do that, just let me know in the comment section below. But I just want to go into the next way of getting clients. The next step, which is similar to email marketing, is that you'll be doing cold DMs. Cold DMs means that you'll be doing the exact same thing that I explained in email marketing, but you'll be doing it on social media. For example, on Instagram, on Facebook, or on LinkedIn, you'll be reaching out to people that you feel are a potential fit to your business, and then you're going to be offering your services to them. So you can still go ahead and use the same templates here. But then obviously, if you are doing it, maybe like, for example, on Instagram, you have to find, you have to make the message just slightly a bit shorter, but you just send out the message to them and you're just pitching to them and hopefully they will buy it and they will give you the opportunity for you to do some work for them. Another form of outbound marketing is when you are attending networking events, like for example, in my area, sometimes there are tech events, there are AI events, or there is a local BNI, it stands for business network something. But basically people who do business, they all come here, they meet, to have meetings. Sometimes we have someone who is speaking and talking about business. Business. And then afterwards, we get the opportunity to network and talk about, okay, what do you do for your business? And sometimes you can actually find some clients who want to work with you. The other more traditional way of doing outbound marketing is just by doing door-to-door -door marketing. Whereby, for example, if you're a website designer and you see different companies that need website design, you simply walk up to them, ask to talk to the manager or the business owner, and then offer to do the web design for them. And just to show you another expert tip, this works for some industries, for example, website design or maybe graphic design. You can actually use Google Maps to find clients. Like for example, here I've just searched and say the hair salons near me. And what it's going to do is that it's going to show me a map of all the different hair salons that are actually in my location. So now if I'm a website designer, I'm going to be looking for the ones that either don't have websites or they have got lousy websites. For example, I'm seeing this one, which is called the Hair Haven House. And you'll notice that all these other ones, there's something written website to the left here, but this one doesn't have a website. So I can just simply find the address as this is Google Maps. As you can see here, I can click on directions to see exactly where it is. And then I can just approach them and say, hey, I'd like to do a website for you. For these other ones that already have got websites, I'll just go ahead and check whether the website is modern, whether it's fresh, whether it's something that needs improvement. If it's a good website, I'll just leave them alone. So depending on what your niche is, you can actually use this method to find some clients near you. And then you're just going to be approaching them door to door. And then the other way of actually doing inbound marketing is by doing cold calling. Cold calling simply means that you pick up the phone and then you call people and you start pitching your services to them. Using this example that I just showed you here of Google Maps, you can easily find people's numbers on Google, right? Depending on what you want to offer them, then you can just call them up and say, hey, can I speak to the manager? Hi, the, yes, is the manager speaking. Hi, sir, I noticed that you don't have a website. I'm the best website designer in this country. I want to build a website for you. What time can I come and see you? Simple as that. Now, let's talk about inbound marketing. Inbound simply means that these people are, are actually going to be looking for you. You are not looking for them. 
And just like to give you examples of this, the first one is establishing a personal brand. Like for myself, I've got a whole YouTube channel where people come and learn from me about different ways of create, of earning income for themselves. I don't have to look for clients who want to learn how to create income. People are always messaging me saying, hey, Marshall, can you help me? I want to start something. I want to start a business. And then depending on what I have to offer, I can easily find clients like that. And then here's another guy that I follow. His name is Peyton Clark Smith, and he's a website designer. He gets all his website clients by simply creating video content on YouTube. That content that has to do with website design. So he'll be showing the designs that he has made. He's showing designs. Uh, he'll be showing clients that he's actually working with. He's showing how to actually make a, design, a website for yourself. And people come to him and learn how to do website design. People come to him to hire him to actually build websites for them. So he finds it very easy. And because his videos are just there on YouTube, it's very easy for him to get lots of clients. As you can see, some of his videos have got 16,000 views, 17,000 views, 7,000 views, 2,000 views. There are so many different people around the world watching this content and reaching out to him, asking him to help them with their websites. Another example is this lady who is using TikTok, so it doesn't have to be on YouTube. But this lady, her name is Becca Luna. She's also a website designer. And she just basically just creates content talking about website design and showing the designs that she has made. So if you're a lady watching this, this thing is not only for guys, but as you can see, ladies are also killing it out there. Here's another guy who's doing the exact same thing, but he's doing it on Twitter. And he focuses more, mainly on helping people to do Amazon KDP. Some people hire him to create products that they can actually sell. Some people hire him to show them how to do the whole process. And so he's getting a lot of clients by him simply creating a Twitter account, creating content on, t on Twitter, and then Clients just come to him, they reach out to him, they ask for his help just by him creating content. Now, personally, I think this is the best way to actually get clients. It's better than the previous methods that we spoke about for outbound marketing where you have to look for clients and convince them. This way, clients are always seeing you active on social media every single day and they, it helps with the no like trust factor. They easily trust you because you are very visible on social media and they reach out to you. This way, you'll never run out of clients. The other way that you can also approach this is by doing SEO. SEO stands for search engine optimization. This is when you have got a website and you optimize it in a way that people will see it. Now, if, if you search for anything on Google, you notice that there's page one of Google, page two, page three. No one goes to check page two and page three. Everyone only checks for stuff on page one. So SEO is about helping websites to appear on the first page. So if you can learn SEO, you can figure it out. You can get your website to rank on the first page so that people know that, okay, if I'm looking for graphic designer, you pop up and then they'll be easily just reaching out to you. Like here's a quick example. If I just search for website design, you're going to see that there are lots of websites here that pop up, say sponsored, right? Because these are companies that are paying Google to appear on the top of the Google results. But if I keep scrolling down, all these companies that are, are popping up here, they have used SEO to appear on this front page of Google. As you can see, they are saying .coza because Google is recognizing that these are companies that are near to me and I might be interested in working with them. .coza is like the .com that we use, but specifically for South Africa. So all these websites that you see on the front page, they are examples of websites that have done SEO well. And then the next example that I'll give is building an email list. For example, maybe you just run some paid advertising and then you get people maybe to download something for free. That's a guide that shows them how to do something. Once you've got their email addresses, you then can start marketing to them as much as possible, as many times as you want, because you now have got access to their email address. So now when you send out all these emails and then you are giving an offer that you know that people are interested in, they start reaching out to you. They start coming to your website because you send out those emails. And then that's one way that you can start getting clients. Now, here's some, a couple of guidelines that you need to also consider when you're reaching out to clients. The first one is that you want to focus on clients that have got the ability to pay you. You don't want to do work for clients that you're going to be struggling to receive payment. Something that took you maybe a day to work on, but then it takes them three months for them to pay you because they are facing money issues. Number two, you want to focus on people that are taking their business seriously, not someone who is just doing something part-time, but it's something that they are serious about and they are really trying to make some progress with their business. And then next, you want to focus on businesses that are not too big and they are also at the same time not too small. What I mean by this is that if you are targeting companies that are too big, probably they already got people that are employed or some people that they have been working with for years 
Therefore, they're not going to give you the job. But you want to find people who are, maybe they've been in business for two or three years and they want to expand, but they're not those huge corporate companies. Like let's say that maybe you're going to approach uh, YouTubers. You don't want to find those, you don't want to approach those YouTubers with millions of followers. You want to approach the ones with maybe you've got 5,000 to about 100,000 followers and then you reach out to them offering to do their thumbnail design their video editing or whatever service that you want to offer. Once you start getting clients through the door, the next thing that you have to figure out is how to start behaving like a business or the process of actually managing your business. What that means is that you need to set up SOPs or standard operating procedures. This basically means how you work on a day-to-day -day basis. This includes like the daily activities that you need to do and how you work with clients. Like one thing that you need to set as a boundary is clients should not just reach out to you whenever they want every single time, every single minute of the day. If you don't set these boundaries early, sometimes you receive messages from clients asking you to make some changes on something on a Sunday evening when you should be spending that time relaxing or with your family. But there are just a couple of things that you need to think about. How exactly do I want to work in relation to my clients? And then also the daily activities that you need to be doing for yourself and your business. So make sure that you're setting boundaries. Otherwise, you're going to be burnt out and you're going to be talking to clients or times and periods when you shouldn't be. And then also, let's say, for example, you are doing a website for a client. Don't go ahead and build the whole website. Then you come back to the client and say, hey, here's the website. And then they start making revisions. Learn to do things maybe in portions. For example, maybe just start off by building the first page and then you show them and then they approve it. If there are any changes, at least you know how the rest of the pages should be because you're getting an insight into how the client thinks. If you're editing a 30-minute video, just edit the first five minutes and then show them and then they give you feedback on whether they are happy with it or not. That way it prevents you from spending countless hours doing the wrong thing because it's very important for you to receive feedback from your client. And then also consider like your daily activities. What are you supposed to be doing on a daily basis? Like how much time are you going to spend reaching out to clients if you're using outbound methods? Or how much time are you going to spend creating content if you're using inbound methods? How many emails are you going to be sending out? How much content are you going to be creating? How much content are you going to be researching? How much time are you going to spend researching content ideas. And also you need to be very aware that especially when you are beginning, you need to spend more time looking for clients than actually doing the work. So you need to set outside time that let's say maybe if you've got an eight hour day, you dedicate five hours of that time to looking for clients and then three hours to doing the work for the clients. Why? Because you want to build an influx of clients to a point until you get to the point whereby you have you don't have to be looking for clients, but then you can just spend that all that time focusing on getting clients work done. So these are things that you just need to think through. And then you are going to be doing the same process over and over and over and over again until your business gets to a point where it can run without you. One of the biggest challenges that makes a lot of freelancers fail is the issue of repetition. People always want to do some new exciting work and they don't realize that business is all about repetition, doing the correct things all the time. And then that's what's going to get you the results. Now, once again, just to mention, I have got a freelance blueprint that you can get access to that will show you step by step with the links and, and guidance on everything that we're talking about here, but more in depth on how to get started with freelancing. I'm going to put the link in the description of this video. Make sure that you check it out. You can just get it just for $15. If you want my course, just make sure that you register or be on the waiting list, or maybe it's already available. You can also check the link in the description below. Or if you want direct access to me to get one-on-one -on -one coaching, it's all going to be there in the description below so that you can get more in-depth training from me. Now, another question that you might have is, okay, how do I receive payments or how do I do invoices? How do I handle the money aspect of freelancing. So you just need to find what works for you in your country and what works for your business. Now, there are different methods that I recommend. Personally, I use Stripe. Stripe is like one of the simplest payment providers uh, for doing international payments. But Stripe is not available in most countries. Like, for example, in South Africa, it was a struggle for me to get Stripe. But because most of my clients are US-based and the UK-based, I had to get Stripe. If you can get Stripe, it will be a bonus for you. But basically, do what works for you. Other alternatives are the ones that I recommend. And I'm going to put links to them in the in the description below. There's WISE. A nice part about WISE is that you can receive payments from anywhere. You can receive payments from any bank account around the world. They also give you bank accounts like I'm in South Africa, but I've got an American bank account. I've got a UK bank account. I can open a bank account in Jamaica through Stripe. And then with Stripe, you can send, you can get 
You can send invoices. You can receive payments. It's just it's just the best way for you to receive payments from anywhere around the world. A similar alternative is Payoneer. Payoneer is also great in that it gives you accounts in all different countries. I just prefer Wise to it more, but it basically does the same thing. And then another, the one of the most popular ones out there in the world is PayPal. Though personally, I'm trying to run away from PayPal because the more money you make on PayPal, they sometimes put a hold on your account, wanting you to explain what this money is for. So it becomes a nuisance every single time if you have to explain what money is for, and yet they know that you are a freelancer. So yes, I receive PayPal payments sometimes, but I prefer using the other options that I've already mentioned. But And yes, PayPal is a good option, but, but I prefer using the other methods that I've already mentioned. An alternative to Stripe in Africa is Paystack. Paystack is Stripe, but the sub, but the African version. So you can also try and use that one. And then the last one, if you're specifically if you are in South Africa, you are going to need to get Payfast. Payfast is like a payment processing tool that we use in South Africa. So if you want people to pay on your website, you need to have Payfast. It allows you to receive money in RAND payments. Once again, all the links to these different websites are going to be in the description of this video. And it's really up to you on how exactly you're going to be receiving the payments. Basically, there are three ways that you can approach it. Number one, someone can send you the full payment upfront before you do any work. Normally, people will do that for you when they know that they can trust you, meaning that maybe you've done jobs for them before and then they hire you for another job. In most cases, they will send money upfront. If you're using a platform like maybe Upwork or Fiverr, what happens is that the client pays the platform and then that money is held in escrow, meaning that the client no longer has the money, but you also can't access it until the job is done. When the client says, yes, you did the job and they're happy with it, that money gets released. The second way that you can approach it is a part payment, meaning that the client pays maybe 25%, 30%, 50% down, and then they pay the rest when the job is completed. That's another way to approach it. And sometimes I would actually recommend that because sometimes you can spend so many countless hours on a client who then disappears. They might disappear because maybe they were a scammer, though there are ways to make sure that you're not being scammed, or they might disappear because something happened and they can't get back to you, meaning that you spend countless hours working on something and then you're not going to get paid. And this has happened to me before. So I always recommend before you do any work, just try and get some form of payment. And also, before you submit the completed work, make sure that you get the rest of the payment. And then the last way is for you to actually just do the work and then they pay you later. Like uh, like I mentioned, I don't normally recommend this, but sometimes you need to do it, especially when you are building a new relationship with maybe some clients. Like just to give you another example, sometimes I get paid by companies to create content on YouTube. Some companies pay me upfront because they they feel they trust me based on all the content that I've been sharing. Then there's some because maybe they say a first time paying maybe an influencer. They are scared to pay me up front. So I just go ahead and create the video. Then, But then before I publish it for everyone to be able to see, it, they then make the payment. And just an expert tip, try and send invoices using the tool that you want paid through. For example, if I want them to pay me using Wise, I'll create an invoice in Wise. If I want them to pay me on Stripe, I'll send an invoice using uh, Stripe. Same thing with PayPal or Paystack or whatever. Once you have got a steady stream of clients coming in, the next thing that you need to be thinking about is how can I expand my business to make it run without you being there? And then that's what we call the transition from freelancing to an agency setup. Okay, just to give you an example of what I mean, if you look at the structure of, of a freelance business, it includes you finding clients to work with. Then number two, actually doing the work and delivering it to clients. As your business grows, as you start making money, you can just focus on maybe getting someone else to do the actual work for you so that you spend more time on finding clients. Now think about it. If you have got the capacity to work with five clients per month, but then you hire someone else to take care of those five clients of yours, it means that you can do five plus another person who does five as well. Now your company is servicing 10 clients per month. Then if you hire another person again, it becomes 15. Another person becomes 20. But then eventually you just want to remove yourself from the process so that you can hire as many people as possible so that your focus is only on getting clients. And then eventually you want to remove yourself from the process of getting clients as well. You're now hiring people to run adverts for you. You're hiring people to do cold outreach for you. You're hiring people to create content for you until you get to a point whereby you can just go on holiday for 30 days without even looking at your business, but your business is running because you've managed to set up the systems for yourself. One book that I'd recommend that you read is this one, which is called The E-Myth Revisited. I'm going to put a link to it in the description below. 
it will teach you how to actually build and structure a business in the way that I've just explained. And also in the future, I'm going to be doing some reviews about different types of books. And I'm going to talk about this one. If there's something that you're interested in, let me know in the comment section below. So now if you follow all the steps that I've mentioned so far, you have got everything that you need to start a freelance business and start succeeding. You don't have to look for more information out there. This is all the information that you need. The only thing that's going to stop you from getting the results that you want is you not doing the work, period. But let's just say that you do have some questions that maybe I didn't answer in this video. Make sure that you leave them in the comments below and I'm just going to get back to you with um, all the answers 